So I'm sitting here this morning. I've had some thoughts watching the sun come up that don't really fit in with the book that I'm writing right now or where I'm writing it. But they did kind of stir this this pot, so to speak. I'm writing about the vice here. I'm writing about some of the uh, how Odin got the mead. I may, I may, I'm going to read a little bit of it here because I think there's some important parts here that's going to lead into these thoughts that keep showing up in my mind concerning a person's thought process, how they get where they are, how they deal with anxiety, how they deal with depression, how they deal with adversity. You see, they, um, there's a pattern here that is repeated in life for a lot of people. It's about, we'll start right here. And again said Eager, when did this art, which he called Posey, derive its beginnings? Froggy answered, these were the beginnings thereof. The gods had a dispute with the folk which were called the Vanir, and they appointed a peace meeting between them and established a peace in this way. They each went to a vat and spat their spittle therein from their mouths. Their spittle, not gold, but the liquid evidence of their DNA. Their genetic makeup is combined to create something magnificent, which is dedicated to us. Once again, a liquid, a form of water, is used as a conduit for the divine. We have Rix Thula, where the divine is invited into the home. We have Baldwin Forseti, establishing justice for our society. And we have all the gods imparting their wisdom onto the world in the form of Kavasir. This seems to me that it's a powerful reassurance that these divine beings are on our side. Furthermore, it seems that they have literally built a path we might follow in order to join them. At the very least, tools with which we might build ourselves a fine life, an enigma wrapped in a riddle I once heard, and it seems to encapsulate the runes most accurately. It is up to us to decipher those wise secrets of growth and development hidden within Posey, and all of them are a demonstration of what a person can become. See, the combination of all these gods provides men with an answer to any and all problems. Think about that. These gods, who had been at war with each other, decided upon a peace. And after Odin had returned from his wanderings and his sacrifice of himself to himself to become a wiser leader, they all came together to create something truly beneficial to the entirety of existence. Once they had done so, they refused to let it go. Once we find something which gives our lives purpose, guidance, and direction, we should follow their example and hang on to it with everything we're worth. The expression of this thought process upon the world from a person who has found that special fire which burns within him will benefit everyone around him or her. <laughs> During an interview I had a couple of weeks ago with uh, Justin Garcia, I mentioned about going through special forces assessment and selection. Last night I saw a video. It was some coach coaching a football player, some you know high school football championship team, feel-good movie. And he got that kid on his back, and this coach put a blindfold on him, and he had the kid crawl on all fours with another kid on his back, blindfolded, try to get to the 50-yard line. And he screamed at him, and he hollered at him, and he told him not to quit and keep moving, go forward, keep trying, keep trying. And when he took the blindfold off, he was at the finish line. You see, out here in society, there's not always somebody out there to holler at us, to encourage us, to support us, to say, keep trying. It's a multi-billion dollar industry, the people that buy into that. Somebody to tell them, you can do it, you can make it. First time I went through SFAS, I was woefully unprepared for the assessment course. I'd been in the mechanized infantry unit, and I was, I had trained the best I could, being a young soldier with a wife and a couple of kids. Uh, it's difficult to dedicate your day at work and then dedicate the rest of your day to marching 12 miles or doing 600 sit-ups or whatever it is or time this event or time five-mile run. So I did the best I could and I went there and I realized this is going to be tough. See, because once you go to the field, all the other training in the military, there's somebody there hollering at you, pushing you to find out what your limits are. There's somebody there screaming at you saying, you better not quit, you better not fall out of my run. Well, that's not the case at the SFAS. You see, you are given a task. And it's up to you to do it to the best of your ability. 
you're the one that's going to decide how well you do or don't do it. You're the one that's going to figure out the quality of that outcome. You know who the biggest, what the biggest obstacle to doing that was? It wasn't the two and a half mile long obstacle course. It wasn't the timed five mile run or the, or the timed 12 mile road march with 70 pound packs and feet so swollen I had to cut the side of my boot to let them out or blisters on blisters or a brown recluse bite or a or a blister on my back from my rucksack and sand and walking through the middle of the night and land nav and movements that were 20 clicks apart. Those weren't the tough part. The tough part was convincing myself that I could take one more step. The tough part was believing that I had what it took. You know what? Once I did that, even though I was never selected to go wear a green beret. And I went through it again to try it one more time. It's just the middle of the pack, top of the line soldier, high speed, low drag infantry. Once I figured that out, that the limits that I possess are entirely made in my own mind, I've had people ask me, how do you work so hard? How can you climb those towers? How can you still be working? You're 48 years old. These 20 year old men have fallen down because I know that my body's not going to quit. And that's all fine and dandy. It sounds like bragging rights, but I just read in the lore here that these gods have given us a lot of gifts. These gods have made a commitment between themselves to offer us support and encouragement and instruction. And yet every day I see people more than willing to fall down and garner some attention to be the victim. They've lost the argument with their own mind. They've failed. They're, they're negotiating with their mind about how they want to feel. They're giving up their own authority over their own brain. It's your mind. You control the thoughts you think. If you don't, who else will? Well, let me tell you, there's plenty of people more than willing to take advantage of our inability to make a decision. Don't doubt that for a second. Politicians, all kinds of social movements, people looking to, will teach you to look for a reason to be offended by, for. You can't because your mind is not going to let you go any further. You figured out, well, this is as far as I can go. But, but if I become a victim, if I can get a bunch of attention, well, I might be a little bit more important. I don't have to do anything. If I read a big old book and talk about what I think I know, well, I won't really have to do anything, and I don't have to go any further because I don't know if I can. I'm a little bit hurt. Things are a little bit tough. Whose fault is that? That's always our perception of the situation, which makes it tough or not. I assure you, I've been in some tough situations. <laughs> Every time... You know, the other thing you, you see, you see these people talking about, you think I really want to do this? You think I'm out here doing this because I like it? Yes, I do. I see cops complain. You think I'm out here because I like doing this? Yes, I do. My infantry drill sergeant said to me, you asked for it and you said, yeah, I want to be in the infantry. And once I realized that and embraced that, the good and the bad of it, my life takes on a whole new meaning. My perception of life takes on a whole new meaning. The opportunities I have begin to abound. I chose this past. The very best thinking I could come up with, the top-notch class A thought process I had, put me in a situation, and if I hate it, well, it's time for me to fix it. And I got a reminder here that these gods have given me tools to do it. Any person who begins a journey to become something more will inevitably offend the sense of those who are content right where they are. Who do you think you are to change the rules of the game we have played for so long? I don't even know you, they might say. It's easy to remark about it when someone begins to go downhill. They become more selfish, insecure, angry, arrogant, and hateful, resentful at everything going on around them. And they will share that pain they feel with everyone around them. But when they stop reacting to having their buttons pushed in the same old familiar way, 
Well, what now? People usually grow apart in such scenarios. Old friends fall away or become distant. Sometimes they will sabotage your efforts with ever more increasing regularity and offensiveness. If you can't take charge of your own thought process in that point, if you don't understand the limits of your capabilities, if you don't have the understanding that I can take one more step, well, that's always the effort to pull us back in. It's always an active effort to stop an example of life from flowering right under their nose. How sick is that? But it is happening. And that's the point where people will usually opt for familiarity, no matter how painful it might become. It's the biggest enemy of personal growth. Why should I have to go all through with all this? I can assure you that walking through the piney woods of North Carolina during a thunderstorm during a road march, the thought ran through my head time and time again. Man, what I want to do, what am I doing here? Why am I doing this? Somehow I figured out how to put my body on autopilot and keep moving forward. We're going to do the same thing in life. We happen to have a faith that gives us tools, instructions, reassurance that we can make it through here. If I know how to fit in, and if I can keep all these people around me, I won't be or feel alone. Well, I shouldn't have to do this at all. I can fit in. I can sacrifice something of who I am, not embrace what I'm supposed to become, and fit in with everybody else. It's the prime reason the example of Odin sacrificing himself to himself is such a graphic representation of a being ridding himself of his ego or victim mentality. The two go hand in hand. One is just far more pronounced than the other in various different settings. It's going to hurt. But once we have the courage to withstand that pain, once we stop negotiating with our own thoughts, once we realize there's a little bit of reassurance coming our way and stop being afraid of being alone, we might find out who we are. We might become worthy of ruling our homes like the king. This is one of the most difficult lessons for former prisoners to learn that they no longer need to fear fitting in as they did when they were locked up. Same thing for soldiers. We no longer need to fear. But then a much different problem comes in for ex-cons and soldiers. What do I do with all this freedom? The growth has changed. It's a new path. We would no more expect to look at the same at 13 as we do at 48, yet we will actively engage in the mental gymnastics necessary to play those games with our parents emotionally as we did at that young age. We are not expected to grow up. Worse yet, we work very hard to teach these same games to our children. They will know the familiar pain we have all felt. What else could we be expected to teach them? Looking at the billions of people engaged in this process, it is no wonder that these ancient gods have once again become involved in the affairs of men. When someone comes along in the world with literally the answers like Cavassio, there will always be those cowardly souls who will wish for the good old days. How terrifying to think that one may no longer be relevant in a new world. Even the threat of a new world order has driven some people over the edge. Their adherence to the conspiracy theories about it has given them an identity. And they believe puts them just a little bit above everybody else. Well, I know a little something you don't. This is the sole intent of all conspiracy theories, to give someone an identity which is more than the next guy. The kind of mindset fully intent to stay right where they are in the world, and nothing will deter that. They don't need to change, and you ain't going to change the world either. The great fear of not knowing how to fit in is a powerful one. One that can be played upon, one that can be manipulated. Rabbit holes lead this way and that way. False information is held out like a carrot until such time as a truly idiotic idea is spoken aloud and all appearance of legitimacy is lost. They put an end to all of this change. In this case, Cavassier is assassinated. But dwarves are shrewd creatures, much like politicians. Politicians are very rarely truly intelligent. What they are is clever. These types of being, upon witnessing the effects such wisdom once released upon the world has the power to do, they will always try to ride the coattails of, or save the essence of such authority as the idea of change and hope offers to the world. Well, they made a mead, the dwarves make a mead of it. A substance which represents the ability to change a man's mind about a great many things. 
but the wisdom of Vassir is gone. Who is there now to answer this question? Like many great movements, once the second in command comes to power and the founder is gone, everyone must trust that this new leader is speaking with the command of learning gained at the foot of any founder, Peter, Paul, Muhammad, Stalin, all of them second class fiddle. Are but a few of the names which represent such an idea, and we see how that worked out. You see, these, these dwarves invited the giant Gillinger to visit them and his wife with them. Ne next, the dwarves invited Gillinger to row up on the sea with them, but when they had gone out from the land, the dwarves rowed into the breakers and capsized the boat. They drowned him. Then his wife started crying about it. Well, they got tired of hearing that, and they killed her. See, this is an example of what I'm talking about. These dwarves don't really care about these giants. They are yet another example of the simple-minded man, one that doesn't understand that he has limitless potential and the reassurance, the benefits, the gifts of the gods to do just about anything his mind can think of if he'll quit negotiating with himself. But to these dwarves, they represent a disposable source of adoration because of all they know, or rather the potential of what they can know. Like many self-styled gurus and scholars, the only important thing about their position is that there is someone, anyone, to buy into what they are selling. When these anyone's head out into the world with a head full of half-truths and a message so front-loaded with radical information that they find themselves unable to swim in this sea of society, they bemoan the fact that it isn't changing because of who they have followed. A little bit of victim mentality sets in and a little bit of ego sets in because now they know something you don't. Hmm. It's a poisonous combination for the thought process of any person. They figured out some kind of truth while the rest of us are all suffers. And then they get fired. They're running off at the mouth about stuff which has absolutely nothing to do with them. People are dedicated to making sure this happens. Don't lead with the chin. They lose a job or a wife and life gets tough in a society when you have decided not to fit in. We are the example to all those closest around us of the potential that this idea, this faith, this spirituality can be. What example are you setting for those closest to you? To follow someone who said all the right things to get us agitated and empower a need to fit in so that we might feel important. Instead of focusing on growing ourselves, we may have turned our penetrating stare onto society in full on armchair quarterback mode only to find out we were wrong. Look at the evening news and all the political commentators, and that's all they're doing is focusing their stare and armchair quarterbacking the man in the ring. Every one of us is the man in the ring in our own life. Don't be the play a walk on part in someone else's life. Be the star of your own life. Figure out who you are. Understand you have gifts. You have strengths. You have a thought process that will allow you to keep moving forward no matter the obstacle. The body is an amazing thing. It will, it will, when it gets tired, it'll sleep. But in the meantime, it'll keep doing any damn thing you tell it to do. And it'll get stronger the more you use it. Same thing with your mind. There may not be anybody around saying, honey, you can do it, buddy. You got this. Keep trying. That's your responsibility. That's our responsibility. And when we were given good sense, Quit listening to those old tapes we were told, well, it's going to fail. This is going to go bad. Something, you know, it's just obviously the other shoe is going to drop. Stop listening to that. Begin believing in yourself. Because I just read to you, there's a group of gods that put a bunch of stuff together because they believed in us. Rig believed in us. Odin, Vili, and Vape believed in us. And once you begin to believe in you, who's to say where you might end up? But don't lead with the chin on some supposedly radical information and truth. Ask yourself, what, what's this really got to do with me putting a million dollars in the bank? What's this really got to do with me raising a happy child? What's this really got to do to stop my ability to instruct my children and raise my family the way I want? You don't like the area you're in? Get out of it move. This is a, still a free country. You can still move somewhere if you want to. But see, when it all goes down and people get upset and we start negotiating with ourselves, then we get called a tourist or we get called weak because 
truths being uttered by whomever do not materialize into well-being without hard work. We got to work for it. These folks are literally drowning in a sea of anxiety. There are tens of thousands of heathens right now drowning in a sea of anxiety because no one reached out to them and said, "You, it's okay to believe in yourself. You have permission to try and do the best you can in your own life, whether or not I approve of it or not. They're trying to find a way to belong to something divine or special. They become even more lost because of a litany of requirements necessary to fit in. If you go to the far left, I assure you, there is no limit to what they will ask you to sacrifice so that you can be just as offended as they are. If you go far enough right, I assure you, there's no limit to what they will ask you to sacrifice so you might fit in with what they really know. Who are you in all of that? What do you become in all of that? How do you become something more in all of that? That's the question we got to ask. When the dwarves get tired of listening to the grief of the wounded woman in society, they get rid of them too. See, Suttinger had a brother, and that's just the way of the world. Your message is one which goes about destroying any kind of life or dehumanizing any group. There will always be a manifestation of your worst fear to defend it, every time. That thing which you fear the most, this kind of association is based upon the shallowness of human interactions. A coming together based upon intense dislike of anything or anyone will usually only last so long. There is no aspect of self which can be developed in us against them mentality. It forces you to change who you are in order to fit in with a negative influence. Like people on methamphetamines, they burn out. But in the meantime, they lose everything they have. I've seen it happen a thousand times. When people find themselves in this situation, they must give up that thing which they believe granted them so much power and authority. Those dwarves give away that meat to save their ass. See, there's a need for change. This time, like most times, it is driven by pain and a fear of being able to survive the moment. What if, if you're suffering depression or anxiety or dealing with constantly negotiating with your thoughts, what are you not giving up that's keeping you in that thought process where you feel like you must negotiate with yourself? Give it up. This time, like most times, it's driven by pain and a fear. Being able to survive the moment. Ask any junkie, drunk, survivor of abuse, escapee from a cult or groupthink setup, and they will tell you that this story is all too familiar. No growth is even possible, just a placating attitude and a willingness to deny who you are so you won't feel alone. I assure you, it's okay to be alone. It's okay to be alone and be with your own thoughts. That's the biggest problem is that most people can't stand being alone with their own thoughts. A constant stream of thinking that goes through the back of our minds about we did this and we did that and this went wrong and that went wrong and oh, I shouldn't have done that and what if this happens and what if that happens? To be alone with our own thoughts and be able to control that, that's our responsibility. That's our, like I say, if we don't do it, there are plenty of other people in the world willing to take advantage of our inability to make a decision and take care of our own thinking process. Once these shortcomings are let go of, see a new path emerges. Which, which allow these dwarves to survive. Even these base, simple-minded, small, crafty, clever, evil little beings figure out, well, I probably better let that go and I can make it. What happens when somebody like us makes that decision? I'm going to let that go and I bet I can make it. Stop the negative thinking. Once we make the decision to let go of that thing or idea which is literally threatening to drown us in a sea of society, we will find a way to survive. The instant we figure out that by standing alone and embracing exactly who we are instead of what we possess, we will find others who are more than willing to walk with us. Now we aren't so alone, are we? 